Why hello there, I'm Doseku, and welcome back to A Tale of Vengeance. Today, we're going to start things off in Stage 3, the train station. Sounds exciting, right? Of course it does. For the first part of the stage, we're going to be playing as a Kiyo Kusanagi. He hails from the King of Fighters series. And his uh, first appearance was King of Fighters 94. Now, according to the uh, wiki page for him, he was first introduced as a, uh, oddly enough, a cocky, delinquent high school student who was the hair of the Kusnagi clan. He was also the head of the Japan team. The silly thing is, uh, according to his profile in his first game, his birthday uh, or his age was 19. Well, in the rest of the series, he was 20. I. I honestly don't remember having high school students be that old unless they like failed a grade or something, but whatever. It actually gets kind of silly with him later on in the series because um, while looking him up, I actually ran into a couple of different characters. Was it Kyo 1 and Kyo 2 who are his uh, clones? I do not believe they are present in this game though, so... There's no worries about having the screen fill up with a bunch of Kios, thus confusing us on, well, who we're fighting. <laughs> I thought it was a neat bit of information though, you know? And, uh, this stage does have a problem, but we won't be seeing that for a little while. So until that point, uh, feel free to enjoy this sweet, sweet stage music. It's actually my favorite track so far, or a series of tracks so far. Because this uh, stage has a bunch of neat songs to it for the different sections that we go into. My god. We're down to walk one life. I don't... I don't get it. It looks like um, any of our characters that aren't, you know, the guy with the sword is just too weak. Oh, check it out! We actually do have an animation for being weak. Or at least not having a lot of health. Alright, that's enough of that. Let's try... Ah, Maru. This has actually been the best character so far because he has managed to get the farthest with the least amount of deaths. In fact, he still does here. So, it was brought to my attention that perhaps my health has been going down when using the specials due to the fact that I've been using it when the uh, PAL thing at the very bottom wasn't full or near empty. So, I'm gonna try to keep an eye on that and see if that holds true or not. Because, so far from the few times I've looked at it while I was here, or while I was fighting through the stage, it actually held true that the health didn't go down while there was something in the uh, pile. But I've also seen it happen where a couple of times where the health would just drain all the way down to like the last quarter and then you couldn't use the special move anymore. Cripes, we're down to one life already? Uh, maybe Morrow isn't as strong as I tied at him. Nah, it's good. I still think he is, and there's somebody hiding at the edge of the screen there, isn't there? There he is. So that's something that I talked about way back in episode 1. How there was like one instance where the enemy was just off screen but wouldn't come on screen so we couldn't advance until we beat the living crap out of him. Well, you have that instance here and there's a freaking health thing I don't need, but I'll grab it anyway. That guy's called Playa. Well, you know what they say. Haters gonna hate, players gonna play. I think that's what it say what they say anyway, right? Meh. And we got more dogs. Eh. 
Okay, that's why Maru lasted so long. I was actually kind of curious about those uh, green shuriken things. And apparently what they are is 1-ups. Okay. Now things make sense. Huh. Yeah, the music's alright here too. Oh. Right. Alright, so... Welcome to the uh, larger problem of this stage. This is the segment where this game will throw dogs at you like nobody's business. In fact, it will keep throwing a lot of dogs at you throughout the rest of the stage. And they're kind of hard to deal with. They're kind of very hard to deal with. But we're going to try our best here, you know? I won't let things like little dogs like these stop us from advancing into the story. Come on, you can do this. Ugh. I really don't like dogs in this game. You know, I'm actually wondering, is it possible that a lot of the enemies from this game also hail from King of Fighters? I'm gonna have to look into that. I mean, because they have to come from somewhere, right? And since this game is heavily influenced by various fighter games, it would only make sense that it would use fighting game characters as the general mooks that we have to beat up upon. I was actually kind of hoping a train would come up from that background and become like an environmental hazard. But no. No train will ever come from the background and endanger our character at all. Although I think it would have been cool though. But you work with what you work with, right? And the shadow of the enemy on that makes it look like it's just a Mate painting that we're fighting against. Huh. Oh, health! Come on. Yeah. Oh, that was close. So, I'm getting a little better about executing special moves. I still don't know how you do the different sword attacks and everything. But I believe I tied it to something with the D-pad. Like... Maybe a few directional keys and then the uh, right button will actually allow you to execute different sword attacks and different punching attacks depending on the character you have. Up, oh, King of Fighter. Alright, so... In all reality, the only reason Maru lived as long as he did in this stage was because we picked up like two different one-ups as we went along and that made me think he was uh, appropriate for the job. So, since we took a look at all the characters already, it's time we came back to Terry and finish the stage out with him. Or will we? <laughs> I don't remember, I think we do. Oh, check out it, it's Alex. So, Alex here is kind of a mini-boss. Once we get rid of Hugo, you'll see that Alex takes a lot- Is that Balrog? Well, no matter he said. Yeah, Alex is very much a mini-boss here. Look how little damage we do to him compared to everybody else. I really do wish the shadows were done better because it screws you with your perception, especially with the stuff in the background where the shadows look a lot closer to the character than they should for what's in the background. 
and then therefore makes you think that there's just a pain in there, not actual death. But it's only a minor complaint for this stage, so it's not really that big of an issue. The bigger issue was the uh, amounts of dogs it threw at you. Alright, so our boss for today is Iori Yagami. He too hails from King of Fighters. In fact, his first appearance was in King of Fighters 95. Apparently, he's a reoccurring character that also acts as a um, rival to Kyo, who we played as in the first part of the stage. Now, I guess for the purposes of this game, he is uh, possessed by the spirit that, well, is possessing the Kuma more or less. Uh, Ryu will talk about that after the fight's over. But our first thing is to deal with Iori and the dogs. Uh. Throughout this fight, they're the ones that cause the most amount of death. And once we get rid of them though, we should have a much easier time even though there's a metric ton of enemies on screen that try to keep you from hitting the boss. Alright Ryo, let's do this. Now. One thing I will say I'm kind of disappointed in when it comes to a realist character is um, his special isn't the Hadouken. Oh, yeah, isn't the Hadouken, which is the fireball ability that's his, like his trademark, right? He has a Shoryuken, which is fine. He just doesn't have the one move he's more known for than the Shoryuken. Uh, but what are you going to do, right? As cool as it was, we at least get the roundhouse kick. Hmm. Alright, let's let Maru finish the job. He sort of does a lot of damage, right? At least it's more effective against the dogs than anything else. And we're done. Okay, so this is actually kind of uh, bullcrap, because I did look this up because I was actually kind of curious. And there's no such character named Aramere in uh, Street Fighter. In fact, what made Akuma what he was is his uh, fighting style, because he wanted to delve into the darker, start of this, uh, darker side of the fighting style he was using, which was uh, Satsu no Heido. It's kind of what Ryu has since... He was taught by uh, Goken, who was uh, Kuma's brother, who was also trained in the Satsu no Heido, but didn't believe in the uh, violent side of it and tried to repurpose it more or less. So, 
Again, Ryu has pretty much the same thing Akuma has, but he is more or less trying to suppress it so he doesn't become like Akuma. Uh, anyway, he should know better. That's all I can say to that, because he knows what made Akuma what he was. And it isn't a possession by a demon. So this is a good place to stop. I thank you guys for watching. And join me next time as we see if Maya will be our friend or foe. I'll see you there.